Some of Nigeria's biggest music labels, Storm Records, Tribe Records, Coded Tunes, YSD, and even EME have shut down operations as record labels. Now this brings me to ask, how important are record labels in 2018? Do musicians still need record labels to succeed? Let's talk about it guys, my name is Victor and this is Vibes with Victor. <music> Back in the day, the number of record labels in Nigeria was directly proportional to the number of popular musicians in the country. Two Baba was to Kenwick's Music, the band was to Moritz, Netosi was with Storm Records, Emma and Ice Prince were with Chocolate City, Whiskey was with EME, and so on. But today, the larger percentage of the biggest artists are either represented by self owned labels or no label at all. Examples are Whiskey, Davido, Olamide, Adekunle Good, Fouls the Bad Guy, Malik Berry, Bikasani, and so on. So the big question is what led to the decline of record labels and the rise of independent movements? The answer is simple, access. Long before now, Nigerian record labels practiced the standard record deal. Now this type of deal is based on music and CD sales. For instance, a record label signs an artist to produce three albums in three years. Typically, under this kind of deal, the record labels takes care of the manufacturing and production expenses, branding, video shoot, in some cases feeding of the artist and of course marketing and the label is expected to make profits from music and CD sales. But two things happened. Number one, people began to pirate CDs and number two, with the introduction of internet, people now had access to music downloads without paying any money and as a result of all of these, record labels began to run at loss. So in order to make profits, labels had to implement the 360 deal. This is the type of contract where the labels get a certain percentage from everything an artist does. This includes music sales, show performances, endorsement deals, commercials, royalties, and basically everything throughout the contract. This model has proven to be profitable for record labels, but at some point it becomes suffocating for musicians because technology has changed a lot of things. You can now make music if you have a home or mobile studio or a friend that can produce for you. And with the evolution from physical to digital consumption, you can distribute your songs on Apple, Spotify, Tidal, Boomplay, Music Plus for free. And with good use of social media and proper campaigns, you can promote your music. You no longer have to spend hundreds of thousands on printing and packaging CDs and contracting a marketer in Alaba before you can get heard. Now let's paint a picture. For instance, you get signed by a record label and let's assume the record label has an in-house producer and a studio, so you record your song. Now the label takes your song to a distribution platform and distributes at a quite cheap rate. And this is something you can do by yourself. So the record label also spends a lot of money, but the thing is, the record label no longer has to spend a lot of money on the primary things, which is manufacturing and distribution. There are other expenses like video shoots, branding, and media presence. But as an independent artist, you can skip branding and media expenses if you leverage on the power of social media and you can also avoid making expensive videos until you have a hit song now back to record labels if they release your music and it becomes a hit money begins to flow in from different angles streaming show performances endorsement deals and all of that stuff but because you're on a 360 deal in many cases up to 70 percent of all of these earnings goes to the record label and as the artist you're left with peanuts now although it is very possible to run an independent movement it requires a lot of patience, calculated actions, partnerships, and self-funding. Remember, you don't have the funds to pay for a slot to perform at the Big Brother Ninja live show, and you also don't have the, the money to pay for a whiskey collaboration. For an independent artist, growth is basically organic. Your talent, hard work, and people skill is what we earn your opportunities. And when you eventually score a hit, you earn a lot of money, and you retain the masters and copyright to all of your records and ultimately stay in control. The reason why most artists sign to record labels is because they lack startup capital, network, expertise and the patience to build from scratch. But for singers like his who were able to score a hit at their first or second try, basic funding and network no longer becomes a problem and at this point, such an artist is barely in need of a record label. This is why Whiskey left EME, this is why Kizana made an undue exit from G Worldwide, and this is why Ronson is constantly at loggerheads with Eric Money. No artist wants to be tied down by a 360 deal when they can independently push their ads and retain all the money and creative control. What's however workable in this climate is a short-term deal like what Olamide does with YBNL. Like Ade Kunle Good, if the universe is on your side, in two years you can release three hits and release an album. Two years is enough time for you to gather funds, build a fan base and a network and two years is also enough time for the label to recoup their investment. 
Alternatively, you can do what Mr. Easy did with Starboy. Mr. Easy wasn't traditionally signed to Starboy because Mr. Easy takes care of his production expenses and manufacturing expenses, but his affiliation with Starboy served as a catalyst. I won't call it a label situation, it's an umbrella situation. I rep Starboy worldwide 110%. My involvement with Whiskey acted as a very solid catalyst to push me, not just in Nigeria, worldwide like i'm independent yet i have so it's, it's very sweet any artist in this position is the best because you have the freedom to do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do on the revenue side which is very important you have the chunk share of the revenue you know it's, it's a beautiful setup man so this is the new reality guys the record label business can only survive if contracts become more flexible and if label executives find new and short-term ways to make money otherwise record labels and musicians will continue to be at loggerheads and just like eme many other labels will consider shutting down thank you guys for watching if you have questions or an objection can you leave your thoughts in the comment section below my name is victor and it's always a pleasure to vibe with you i'll see you guys next week Oh,